Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking time out to be part of today's webinar session. My name is Samuel. I'll be a facilitator for today. The moderator for today is Nancy with Hewitt Pack. If I turn the call to Nancy, I would like to go over some quick housekeeping. To the left hand side of the presentation page, you will see a QA box where you can electronically submit your questions. We have a panel of experts at the background who will either answer these questions immediately or wait until the presentation ends to do so. Below the QA box, you're going to see a download file box where you can download a copy of today's presentation deck, which will be made available for you at a later time at the end, towards the end of the presentation. Please click on the download icon located on the right hand side of the box and save a copy to your desktop. During the course of the presentation, if you'd like to enlarge the presentation slide, please click on the maximize icon located on the top right hand side of the presentation page. Please be reminded that you will need to minimize the presentation slide in order for you to submit your questions electronically via the Q&A box. During the course of the presentation, we're going to be playing a short video. The video is going to be streamed only via the PC, so any of you all with a phone, you will need to mute your phone and then unmute your PC to listen to hear the music playing uh, in the video. Ladies and gentlemen, today's session is recorded. The on-demand will be made available once we conclude, and you can use the same URL that you use to access the live event for the on-demand. Well, that's all I have from the housekeeping. I'd like to turn the call to Nancy to kick start with the presentation. Over to you, Nancy. Thank you. So we're going to talk today about the changing storage landscape, and we're really excited you're joining us because we have uh, some great content to present to you. One thing we do want to remind you of is that we will have a post-event survey come up uh, when we're in the Q&A uh, part of the session. That survey, if you could answer it, will really help us plan ahead, and it will also enter you into a drawing for a uh, 40-inch Samsung TV and two HP Slate 7. So we'll be giving away three um, appreciation prizes for filling out that survey. So st stick around with us for that. Today we have three speakers. Um, Tian Shaw from Samsung will talk to us about how the storage landscape has, has really changed in the last couple of years and um, how we're addressing those needs um, with some um, new technology. Jim Douglas from HP, he's the Worldwide Storage Product Manager, will come on and talk to you about uh, the Z Turbo Drive specifically and how that has revolutionized uh, the way you can look at your workloads and storage situations. And then we have a uh, special guest, Danny Holland from Brain Farm, who has had the opportunity to use the Z Turbo Drive and will tell you about his results in it. Um, he's a um, post-production su supervisor and will really get into um, how he's um, seen uh, gains and things from using the Z Turbo Drive. So before I turn it over to our presenters, I wanted to get a quick poll from you guys out there on what um, which of the following industries do you most identify with? Just so we know who's on the phone and can try and tailor a presentation. So are you in film, episodic TV, the FX, uh, photography? Where are you um, calling in from? <coughs> so I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to answer that one. Looks like we have a lot of professional video people on, and some ph photography and film, so a good mix. Appreciate that. Um, it helps us understand, again, who's on the phone so we can kind of tailor our presentation. So let me now turn it over to Tian, who's going to talk about the changing face of storage and uh, let you know what's happening there. Tian? Good morning. My name is Tian Shaw. I'm a product marketing manager at Samsung for SSDs. For those of you who might not be familiar with what an SSD is, it stands for Solid State Drive. It essentially performs the task of storage traditionally borne by hard disk drives, except it's much faster, uh, more reliable, because it has no moving parts. And the uh, topic of my talk today is the changing face of storage. This first slide shows that whenever we have a paradigm shift, going from the PC era to wired internet, mobile internet, to now the internet of things, there tends to be a tenfold increase in terms of the number of connected devices. In fact, it's estimated by the year 2020 that there will be about 50 billion devices connected. And there's no question that mobile data traffic is exploding with more connections, more users, faster speeds, more video. Uh, that there, it's estimated by 2018 that 190 exabytes of data will be generated 
Now, an exabyte is a pretty esoteric term. So to put that in context, five exabytes is the total data created between the dawn of civilization and the year 2003. And we're talking about 190 exabytes generated in a single year. This chart shows that mobile data traffic is uh, exploding about 100 times over the span of 10 years, going from 2011 to 2020. And correspondingly, IT storage growth demands have grown exponentially as well, about 21x over the same time period. Popular social networking sites, such as YouTube, essentially has transformed the general population from content consumers to content generators. In fact, more video is uploaded now on YouTube in a single month than the three major US networks created in 60 years. So social networking is really changing everything. A lot of you probably have these apps on your phone today. Facebook is over 8.7 billion pages a day. WhatsApp, greater than 50 billion messages a day. Twitter, over 500 million tweets a day. Phones are checked 100 billion times a day. And NAND Flash, the memory technology behind SSDs, is becoming ubiquitous, both at the client level as well as the data center level. From the moment you take a picture or video on your phone, it gets sent over the network to the data center, gets redistributed to millions of other devices, uh, NAND is essentially involved every step of the way. So if you look at the NAND growth outlook, uh, from 2011, there was about 16 billion gigabyte equivalents shipped to now about 50 billion and estimated to, go, to grow to 86 billion gigabyte equivalents over the next two years. Uh, what's interesting with the chart on the right is that SSDs have uh, taken a bigger portion of the NAND consumption, going from about 11% in 2011 to about 26% today, and growing to about 37% over the next couple of years. In terms of the SSD uh, growth outlook, the PC market expects to grow about 4.7 times over the next four years. Uh, for the data center and enterprise market, expected to grow over eight times over the same time period. So the exponential growth is continuing. And Samsung is leading the way in terms of uh, both the NAND technology and the SSDs that use them. Worldwide, we have about 35% of the, uh, the market in NAND shipments, and about 47% of the worldwide shipments in SSDs. To give you a little history of Samsung's involvement in SSDs, we brought SSDs to the mainstream market back in 2006, where we delivered a 32 gigabyte SLC SSD. SLC, SLC stands for single level cell, means one memory cell can carry one bit of information. So back then, it was about $14 per gigabyte for an SSD. In 2008, we basically launched the world's first MLC-based SSD. MLC stands for multi-level cell. Now you can carry two bits of information per memory cell. This basically increased density and capacity of the drive, as well as lowering costs. In fact, we lowered costs by about 40%. Now we were able to ship a 128 gigabyte drive at a cost of about $5.10 per gigabyte. And in 2012, we shipped the world's first TLC SSD. TLC stands for tri-level cell. Now we're able to uh, basically deliver three bits of information per memory cell. This increased uh, density even further. Now we're shipping uh, basically higher capacities to compete with hard disk drives, a 500 gigabyte drive at less than a dollar per gigabyte. And in 2013, we uh, shipped the world's first PCIe-based SSD. 
Now, PCIe is a uh, newer interface for solid-state drives. Essentially, uh, dramatically increases the bandwidth as well as reducing latency compared to uh, the traditional SATA interface. So going from about 600 megabytes per second to about 4 gigabytes per second and reducing latency about, by about a third. And in that same year, we delivered the world's first 3D NAND SSD. Now, as, a, as the memory industry has uh, basically increased densities traditionally by going down in process geometry, so that means squeezing the memory cells ever closer together. But we're actually at a technology point where the cells are so close together that they're interfering with each other. So we're currently at about 128 gigabit per die density. So there's a real question of whether we can get to 256, uh, let alone anything beyond. So we needed a breakthrough as an industry. And this is where Samsung introduced innovation in, the term, uh, in terms of doing 3D NAND. So instead of trying to squeeze cells ever closer together, we stack them vertically on top of each other. So this uh, new technology gives us more capacity, more speed, and more power efficiency. Um, but what's actually more exciting about this technology is that it allows us to scale going forward. This is technology that will take us to one terabit densities and beyond. And with that, we introduced the world's first 32-layer uh, vertical NAND SSD. Uh, this SSD has been get getting a lot of press coverage. Uh, I've uh, included some quotes on this slide. A general sentiment is that vertical NAND opens up a whole new world when we look at SSD endurance, density, battery life uh, for portables, but last but not least, SSD performance. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Nancy. Perfect. Thank you, Tian. Very, very interesting and exciting about where um, storage technology is going. Appreciate that. Uh, let's do another polling question. You've heard about, and this should be popping up in a separate window for you guys if you didn't see the first one. I apologize for that. Um, to what extent are you seeing data growth in your workflow and environment? You heard Tan show you how, how much is expanding. Uh, in your M&E type areas, where are you um, seeing this? I'll give you a couple seconds to answer. we got a lot of people, a lot of different areas. Some of you guys are seeing 25% um, growth. Some of you are seeing 2x growth. And a lot of you guys just know it's growing and that you need to be able to manage it a little bit better. So perfect. This definitely does help us later on when we're trying to understand um, customer needs and the plan for those. I do want to um, remind you that you can ask questions as we go along or queue them up for the question and answer session. So don't forget to type those into the question area. And I'm going to turn it now over to Jim Douglas um, to talk about the Z Turbo Drive for uh, workstations. Jim? Thanks, Nancy. Uh, as Nancy mentioned, uh, I'm the worldwide product manager for storage for HP's workstations, uh, which includes the storage solutions and connectivity for desktop and mobile workstation platforms. Uh, in this role, I have been watching with excitement for these industry transitions as they really enable huge gains in performance even as costs continue to decline for SSD products. So as, as Tian mentioned uh, in his overview of the technology evolution, SATA-based SSDs have now matured, and their performance is limited by the SATA bus limitations. This graph shows the performance over time as SATA SSDs have matured and created a performance gap to traditional hard disk drives. The horizontal dashed lines represent the maximum bandwidth of the connection. And the points on the graph show the actual bandwidth that the devices can achieve. As you can see, the shift to connecting SSDs directly to the PCI Express bus will enable major performance improvements, roughly twice the performance of SATA SSDs, and thus significantly widen the gap between the performance of hard drives. 
The blue dashed line represents an estimate of the performance gains by client grade products in the industry. And ultimately, the cost will continue to decline as the technology evolves. The HPZ TurboDrive is the first to employ this new approach for workstations, which yields performance greater than one gigabyte per second. Based on industry projections, we see the potential of doubling that number in the near future. We launched this solution earlier this year, and we are seeing tremendous excitement from customers who are using the solution to accelerate their workstation workflows. The HPZ TurboDrive features a PCI uh, Express connected SSD, and this enables performance levels greater than one gigabyte per second. This performance is available at a price that is at parity with today's comparable SATA SSDs. This will enable the highest price performance ratio for client grade SSDs. We are partnering with Samsung for this PCI Express SSD solution that is included on the HP Z Turbo Drive. And we see increased performance with new products from Samsung in the near future. The HP Z Turbo Drive is supported on desktop and mobile platforms of our workstations. It supports storage configurations as a boot device and as a data device. It is available in two capacities today for desktop workstations, the 256 and the 512 gigabyte versions. The installation is straightforward, and it does not require a separate driver. Also, multiple drives can be added to your desktop systems to increase capacity and or performance. The performance gains are significant when connecting to the PCI Express bus. The sequential read and write performance is roughly twice as fast as today's SATA SSD products. It is especially interesting to look at the incredible difference between the, tur uh, the Z Turbo Drive and a commercial grade uh, hard disk drive, which is greater than six times faster for sequential read performance. The data on the right graphs are pure speed benchmarks. The graph in the lower left represents a real-world benchmark for SOLIDWORKS, a SPEC WPC benchmark. With this real-world benchmark, we see the performance improvements in random performance, yet not necessarily as dramatic as the sequential performance, which is what we would expect. It is one thing for us to read spec sheets, but many of us like to see the actual performance of components in real world uh, situations. I invite you to watch the comparison demo of the HPZ Turbo Drive as compared to the Micron M550 SATA SSD. This evaluation was conducted independently by OTSI earlier this year, and it employs several different benchmark analyses. You can click on the link uh, at your leisure and watch, uh, watch the results. Now back to you, Nancy. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. I did want to mention that uh, the OTSI benchmarking demo also has a white paper associated with it. And you can see all the different drives they compared the Z Turbo Drive to and uh, the results that they got for uh, various scenarios. So let's go on to a polling question three. Tim talked about SSDs. Tian talked about them. Are you using them today? Uh, is this a technology you're, you've embraced or you're looking at? Um, when do you expect to use them? So we'll see how it's going on this. I'll give you a couple of seconds to answer. And Jim, thank you so much for talking about the Z Turbo Drive. Pretty exciting technology. I think we have a, a good range. A lot of people are using them today or in the next six months. And then some of you guys are probably evaluating them, looking at them in the next um, you know, 18 months or so. They haven't really uh, started using them yet. So thank you again for that. That does help, as I mentioned. What we'd like to do now is turn it over to uh, Danny from Brain Farm, who's going to talk to us about his experiences with the uh, Z Turbo Drive and what he's found. So Danny, I'll turn it over to you. All right, good morning. Hello, everyone. Excited to talk a little bit about Brain Farm and share how we've been finding 
some solutions integrating both the the workstations and the turbo drives into our environment uh, to take on some of the challenges that we have with our latest projects. I wanted to kick it off with a little uh, video here. Uh, you will need your computer speakers to hear the audio. Uh, and forgive the quality, it's just somewhat due to the limitations of the environment. Great. So, um, Brain Farm is a full-service entertainment and production company. We work to create amazing films, TV, digital, and commercial content. We were uh, born here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, about six years ago, which is still our home. Not a bad place to work from. Um, <clears throat> like most kind of small companies. We got our start with a passion for filmmaking and some really talented friends. Uh, Kurt Morgan and Travis Rice started collaborating on a film called That's It, That's All um, back in 2007. Kurt's desire to create the absolute best images along with Travis's um, writing ability helped propel that film to a space not traditionally seen before in action sports. Um, we continued that with our latest project, um, The Art of Flight, which is somewhat our most well-known um, film. This continued desire to utilize the latest uh, camera technology. Um, we integrated you know, Cineflex as well as Phantom camera systems um, and helped really drive um, and take the imagery to a whole new level. This along with uh, Travis's continued evolution as a snowboarder help transcend the film uh, kind of outside uh, the snowboarding world. So where are we today? Um, I think like some and many, um, <laughs> we're in a 4K world. We've somewhat um, dove head first um, into 4K filmmaking, which obviously has um, some, unique, some unique challenges and um, things that we're trying to kind of work through. For those less familiar with 4K, it's basically four, four times the number of pixels as HD. So this obviously scales um, both the data that we're now capturing um, and the needs that we have in post to work with that media. On the acquisition side, um, we've been mainly using um, Red uh, Dragons and Red Epics. Uh, we have a 4K Phantom. Uh, we utilize a shot over gyro stabilized gimbal system that we can mount to helicopters and vehicles. Um, you know, all of this basically just helps our production team capture uh, some really amazing imagery, but from a data perspective, create some challenges for us in post-production. Um, <clears throat> so currently, we've got four projects um, that we're working on right now, uh, three of which uh, we're going to finish in 4K. We have Travis's Next snowboard film um, in association with Red Bull. We've got a skateboard film featuring Paul Rodriguez in association with Mountain Dew. A surf film with John John Florence in association with Hurley. And a large scale naturally his natural history project on Yellowstone, which is kind of right in our backyard. 
So as we kind of started to evaluate, you know, how, how do we do this, how do we work at 4K, um, sort of some of the things we, you know, kind of identified as needs were, you know, how do we really play back this material effectively, um, this red native material, you know, at 4K or 5K or 6K. Um, and then we knew from an infrastructure standpoint that, you know, we needed to transcode a lot of this media and create offline media um, to work with. And how do we do that with, uh, you know, the scale of, of footage that we now have? And then lastly, as we look towards grading and finishing, we knew that we need, um, in order to work with uncompressed media, sustained throughput of, you know, 1.2 gigs a second um, to kind of work at that resolution. Uh, so, you know, media, I think, like we touched on earlier in one of the poll questions, <laughs> we're all seeing a growth in media. We don't exactly know how much it is. Um, for us, you know, we're at the point where we can create upwards of two terabytes of media per day on a shoot. Um, for each of our projects, this is roughly hundreds of terabytes um, per film. And this photo here in the middle is basically a bunch of pelicans full of four terabyte hard drives um, about to be sent out uh, for our snowboard project. Um, you know, for that specific project, as an example, we shot over you know, 100, 100 days this last year, and I think we'll probably shoot, you know, somewhere close to that this year. So we have some, you know, unique challenges when it comes to the scale and the amount of media that we're trying to work with um, in kind of a homegrown sense. <clears throat> this is kind of, you know, somewhat the initial bottleneck that we sort of saw was how do we work and deal with this mass quantity of red material, both um, from a playback standpoint as well as creating offline media and transcoding it. Um, on the finishing side, we knew that we needed a system that had the storage speeds um, that were um, fast enough, as mentioned before, the processor and GPU power in which to kind of push all of that and debayer that red material, ability to sort of monitor and look at this stuff, and then awesome software to kind of tie it all together. Um, we've had so far great success. We've kind of integrated uh, around four HP ZA20s and ZA40s into our environment. We've been utilizing the Quadro 6000 um, graphics card, which are sweet. On the connectivity side, you know, Thunderbolt as a um, you know kind of I/O standard is is super beneficial for us. The ability to just drop a card into a ZA20 and get Thunderbolt 2 is is pretty incredible. And then, as I'll kind of touch on here more in depth, the Z turbo drives, um, you know, are pretty amazing when it comes to the kind of performance you get out of those things um, all in the box. And then we've been using Dream Color displays, which are, um, we've, we've uh, <laughs> definitely loved those as well. So um, on the, the storage side, what we've done is striped two 512 gigabyte Z turbo drives together. I think as these um, capacities expand, we'll continue to see um, increased performance. Um, but with those two striped together, we get roughly a throughput of 1.8 gigs a second. And it's pretty incredible to see something <laughs> move that fast. Um, I think I've definitely been used to, you know, running this test on uh, either a fan or a um, local spinning disk. And you know you might you might get up there in the in the you know 500 600 range um, maybe peak out at one gig, but it's pretty cool to see it it really pin off um, off the charts. So what does that mean? Um, you know basically when we're looking to play back 5K or 6K material, you know if we're if we're using the Z Turbo drives, we get basically in association with the you know K6000 and the best processors, we get real time premium debayering. Um, you know, at that resolution, which is pretty incredible. We've seen our uh, transcode times decrease. Um, and then on the DPX finishing side of things, similarly, we now can play basically 4K DPX files, full resolution playback. Um, you know, this allows for kind of 4K finishing and grading in-house, something that maybe was difficult for us to imagine before, thinking that we needed to maybe go out of house for certain grading and finishing needs. Now we can. Um, do that stuff all in the house. 
Um, if you're working in Premiere, for example, using the the Turbo Drive as your um, you know where you put your meta um, meta cache and your video uh, preview files, um, you just get that pretty pretty incredible performance. Um, you know, writing either those little files or just quickly uh, rendering out um, stuff that you might need. So yeah, we overall been super super happy with the performance. Um, you know, as a as a whole, from the from the workstation down to the um, the, turbo, the turbo drives, and uh, yeah, excited about kind of the possibilities going forward. Thank you. Perfect, Danny. Thank you so much. It's exciting to see the real world um, examples of the the performance gains you can get. You know, obviously the processor is super fast, the graphics are super fast, and the storage was kind of the bottleneck that we were seeing. And um, hopefully with these advances, you're going to see that um, kind of go away as well. Let's go to our uh, next polling question. Oops, sorry. What, uh, as your file size are changing, how is your workflow affected? Are, are you seeing these? Um, the bottleneck with the storage size because your file sizes are so large that it's impacting your workflow. Is there minimal impact or you haven't seen any impact or large impact? Um, what are you guys experiencing? Give you a couple seconds here. We're getting a variety of answers again, which is great. Minimal impact or expected impact in the next couple in the next twelve months. And then some of you guys are experiencing some large impacts um, already right now. So uh, again, I think this um, kind of validates what we've been seeing, um, and it does help to get you guys' um, inputs on that. So thank you. Our next um, presenter, I'm going to give it back to Jim, and he's going to talk to you about some of the ways you can um, configure the Z Turbo Drive. There's a lot of different options to um, kind of fit your different needs. So Jim, let's um, get into that a little bit. I'll let you take it away. Okay, Nancy. Uh, in the remaining minutes, I would like to just highlight some additional details of the HP Z Turbo Drive, uh, as you would consider it as an applicable solution uh, for your workstation workflow. Uh, so, as as we've said, uh, we are partnering with Samsung uh, for this PCI Express SSD solution that is included on the Z Turbo Drive. Uh, this device uses commercial grade MLC NAND technology, and thus it has excellent endurance, specified as 146 terabytes uh, total bytes written over the life, uh, which equates to 40 gigabytes per day for five years. Uh, it also has trim support and end to end data protection, which are features which improve your data integrity. Uh, it is also supported by the HP Performance Advisor tool, uh, which uh, ships with all of our HP workstations. Uh, this tool has a wear gauge feature in the tool, uh, which allows you to monitor the wear of the device over the lifetime. Uh, the device is supported on all of our current desktop workstation platforms uh, as a boot device and a data device. Uh, it is architected as a PCI Express by 4 device, and thus it requires a by 4 uh, CPU connected slot to achieve the full performance. Uh, detailed slot recommendations for each platform are available in the quick specs, and this is because each of the different platforms has uh, different um, uh, PCI Express slots available. Uh, it is supported by our current offering of operating systems, and it does not require a separate driver. Uh, it may require a BIOS update for any platform, uh, any HP platform that was deployed prior to June 2014, which is about the time that we launched the device. Uh, it can be configured with additional drives, SATA and SAS. Uh, yet uh, all of these various uh, configurations may not be available from the factory just due to the complexities involved. And yet all of these configurations uh, can be supported uh, with aftermarket option products. Uh, 
So let me talk a little bit about recommended configurations. Uh, so as I just mentioned, the, the Z Turbo drive can be configured along with other drives for a complete storage subsystem. On the left, there are examples of storage subsystems that include additional Z Turbo drives and SATA SSDs to enable you to maximize performance. Uh, and as Danny was mentioning earlier, uh, this enabled him to get uh, close to 2 gigabytes per second performance. On the right side, uh, there are examples of adding high capacity SATA hard drives, either individually or in RAID configurations, to assemble the required storage capacity that meets your needs. Uh, there, are other, there are many other configurations available uh, using the available storage families, including uh, the SSDs that we provide uh, with HP workstations, as well as high-performance SAS drives and SAS and SATA RAID controllers, uh, and then, uh, of course, the, uh, the high-capacity SATA hard drives as well. So the demands of workstation workflows are increasing, as we've seen through some of the polling questions uh, that we've uh, that, that you've helped us with today. Uh, we see this in all of our segments, but some of the most intense growth in data is seen in the segments uh, that we heard from today, uh, media and entertainment segment. As storage technology continues to evolve, there will be performance increases that will dramatically impact these workstation workflows. We see increased performance with new products from Samsung in the near future and are excited to make these available with our workstation platforms. The HPZ Turbo Drive enables the PCI Express connection performance in a client-grade SSD. This doubling of performance carries a similar price to today's SATA SSDs, and it is available on HPZ workstations. So it really is a serious question to ask yourself, what am I waiting for? We believe that now is the time to accelerate your performance and differentiate your solutions with the HPZ Turbo Drive. OK, back to you, Nancy. Perfect, Jim. Thanks for that overview. And it's, um, it's good to know that there are lots of options for using it. And also, the pricing is uh, comparable. So let's go to polling question number five. This is our last one before we get to Q&A. Um, and I want to remind you, we are getting some questions in that we're going to go to next and start answering. And if you have others, please type them in. And our last polling question, <clears throat> if you had um, budget approved and you had the um, PCI e-slots available, what would be your optimal storage solution? Um, do you not have any PCI e-slots available to support this? Or you know, based on what you've heard, would you use a single Z Turbo drive? Would you combine them with SATA SSDs or HDDs? Just to get a feel of um, what you're thinking based on what you've heard today. So I'll give you a couple of seconds on that. We do have a couple that um, are doing a combo type thing, and then uh, a lot of responses that are coming in with a multiple Z turbo drive. So something to think about. I think uh, Jim's overview of the configuration possibilities is a great one to give you some ideas on how to uh, manage your data needs. So thank you again for those answers. Um, we'll go now to our Q&A section. And again, I wanted to remind you that <clears throat> there will be a survey link that pops up that you can um, respond to. It does help us a lot with uh, planning future products and also um, gives you a chance to enter the drawing that we talked about. You see some um, websites here that you can go to get more information on. And there's also a replay. So if you have colleagues who weren't able to join or you want to uh, review what we talked about, uh, you can get this replay. The file is available for download at this point. And um, feel free to do that. So let's go to um, some of the questions we have. I think one of them um, was that you know the PCIe hard drive is faster than a SDD SATA drive. but what about the pricing? So Jim, do you just want to reiterate um, that one? Yeah, so what, so what we're seeing today uh, is that uh, the, the trend is going to be to move 
uh, two PCI Express SSDs in the marketplace. And so uh, what we're seeing is um, costs and pricing are uh, right in line today uh, for similar grade SSDs. Um, and as more vendors uh, come uh, available to the market with products, we would see that there will be you know, more downward pressure on costs. Uh, and, and we would see the mobile market for sure moving toward uh, you know, PCI Express-based SSDs, which is going to drive the volume and therefore the uh, costs. Um, and, and, and the performance is what will drive uh, these products to be the, the go-to products uh, as we would move away from SATA-based SSDs. And I think it's important to note that the Z Turbo Drive is the same price or a little bit lower than current SATA SSDs. Uh, if you compare HP pricing of the two, so yeah, let, uh, Nancy. Also, let me just share a price point uh, for the folks on the phone. The the 256 gigabyte uh, uh, Z Turbo drive today has a list price of 499, and the 512 gigabyte version has a list price of 899. Uh, and so one of the other questions that I saw, I wanted to just state those prices uh, because uh, those prices are uh, very different than uh, most of the enterprise class PCI Express uh, SSDs that are available in the market today. Yeah. Um, what about connections with external Thunderbolt 2 devices? Can you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, right now, I, I, I noticed one other question uh, that, that talked about um, how these would be able to be put into systems. Uh, currently, uh, what HP has done it has made this solution to be proprietary to HP systems. And so there is uh, what, what has been called uh, a BIOS lock on the drive such that it does only work in HP systems that have uh, a, an enabled BIOS for this component. So for uh, today, we do not have a solution for uh, external Thunderbolt chassis uh, because that solution is not able to be recognized by uh, through the BIOS lock. Um, and then there was one other question as well about a uh, competitor's uh, uh, motherboard solution, uh, and and this, uh, you know, the HP Z Turbo Drive uh, would not be able to function uh, or be seen as a storage device uh, because of the BIOS lock solution that we have. Okay. So just a reiteration that PCIe bandwidth enables the same SSE to have a f faster data rate, or is that uh, is that correct? Yeah, let me let me rephrase that a little bit to say that um, the the available bandwidth. So, so so SSDs are architected for a protocol, either SATA or PCI Express, and so there is a different controller that would be used, and that controller is able to take advantage of the greater available bandwidth with a PCI Express connection. Uh, and, and so, so the, the gains seen in the performance are due to the controller and the uh, bandwidth available uh, for, the, for the architected SSD. OK. And do you want to take the RAID question, Jim? Okay, the question as written is, will these disks uh, use a separate RAID controller? What controllers are supported? Um, so the way that uh, we would think about these disks is that they connect directly to the processor, uh, and the actual controller mechanism is now on the SSD device. Uh, in, in past generations of hard drives, the controller uh, was either in the Intel processor complex uh, or it was a separate add-on controller. So 
Uh, RAID at this point is uh, supported. Uh, it ends up being supported through the operating system RAID techniques. Um, and, and so um, external controllers are not required to, to do RAID for uh, the Z Turbo Drive style uh, SSDs. Now I will add one other comment and say that we have test results and we can get you test results for um, RAID uh, uh, performance for multiple Z Turbo Drives in a system. Um, we've tested up to four and have test results for RAID 0 uh, striping of four Z Turbo Drives and we get um, uh, right around the 3.3, 3.5 uh, gigabyte per second range uh, throughput with four Z Turbo drives uh, in a system. Perfect. Perfect. Are there any other questions um, or any other comments from our speakers? Okay. I want to make sure that you um, download the presentation if you'd like to do that. Um, and then, again, please make sure you take the online survey. We, again, would love your responses and want to make sure that you're entered into the drawing uh, for the Samsung 40-inch TV and the HP Slate 7s. And at this time, I wanted to say, say thank you so much to our presenters and also to everyone on the phone for participating. And thank you for joining us today.